This is Josiah Plays Tyranny. All right, we just got Barrack, and we're kind of messing around with gear and stuff. So, if she can't use any of her abilities without dual wield, hmm. What abilities am I even going to take? Well, there's lots of these that don't have anything to do with dual wield. Fury's Rush. Killing Spree. This is pretty cool. Plus two dodge every time she takes damage. Stacking for the whole combat. Mocking Iron, unfortunately, requires dual wield. I know that's shitty. Here's what I could do, though. I could get rid of her bow and give her two weapon sets. One set in which she's dual wielding and one set with the shield. And then she could just switch it back and forth between them. And I could take this, improvised attacks, so that there's no more recovery penalty from switching. And she could switch to dual wield, do a dual wield attack, and then sw switch back to the shield. So that'll work, actually. And we'll just not, we won't even have her use a bow as one of her slots. Of course, that waits the Burning Iron ability, but that's okay. That is okay. Mocking Iron, Grave Digger. Alright, we'll look at her talents more when it's time for her to level up. But we're going to go for this first, Evasive. Which means the first thing we're actually going to get is this, Nimble, bonus to dodge. While only wearing light armor. Now, she's currently only wearing light armor the shield doesn't count against that right i don't think it does don't think it does all right let's give these to him marshberry the juice of the wild marshberry this reminds me of gummy berries from the gummy bears cartoon show unless the metal starts rusting Perhaps that's why Scarlet Chorus tried to get their hands on Tidecasters so they can make Disfavor tolerable to stand near. Well, it's not all the Disfavored, it's just Barrack. The other Disfavored can just take off their armor, like normal. It's only Barrack that's Super Stink Master. And Barrack really reminds me of a character from Planescape Torment. The guy stuck inside of his armor? That seems like a, such a Planescape Tormenty sort of thing. Mean to engagement for 120 seconds, 25% move speed for 120 seconds, 4 quickness, 20... Okay, that's... Hold on. You don't need that, Beric. She needs that. That goes right here. He can have... He... She gets that. Okay, but let's read it anyway. Juice of the Wild Marshberry speeds up the Imbiber's movement and reaction time. Found growing wild in the marshes of Stalwart, these berries are a potent drug. A marshberry, a hell of a drug. The merchant princes of the ma Bastard City were known to indulge in marshberries to sustain a night of drunken revelry. A lifetime of use can result in crippling joint pain and the dullness of wits. I can speak to the dullness of wits. I mean, obviously I haven't used Marshberry, but the meds that I have had to take. Dullness of wits all day. This consumable's effect increases... Oh, they all say this! That's so cool! That the, that the consumables level up with your character. Alright. So... Oh, we haven't read about his boots yet. We read about his gauntlets. The pieces of fused iron that encapsulate Barrack's legs are merely an abstract representation of boots. Worn down sections of rust under his feet appear the result of marching across great distances and patient hours spent filing sections down for the sake of balance. Articulation is either due to coincidence or prolonged effort bending at fused iron, but the result is the same. Barrack can stand and move with some semblance of normalcy. Alright, so he's got 10 points of armor. 
15 versus Pierce, 0 versus Crush, which is terrible. A bunch versus Frost, but he has no deflection, because he's all wearing heavy armor, so he doesn't get deflection. You only get deflection on light armor, which makes no sense to me, of course. That seems like the exact opposite of what should be the case. I mean, if you're deflecting blows, you think it would be deflecting off of heavy armor, not light. But I think what they mean by deflection is essentially like a dodge. It's a chance to downgrade an attack, and it's based on wearing light armor, and it's based on your finesse stat. So I think it's more like, it's more like an additional version of parry and dodge that goes along with them. That you can't do when you're in heavy armor because you don't have enough mobility. That is serious perks with no downside. Where the fuck do you find more berries? I don't know, but I'm going to keep my eye out for them because they're fucking awesome. Yeah, only Barrack is stuck in a living hell. And no, Valor wasn't stinky, that's true. Yeah, this is what normal disfavored armor looks like. She's wearing stone shield armor right here. I mean, she's got it in her colors, that's why it's red. Red and black instead of purple. But, like, that's normal disfavored armor. It does not look like this shit. He kind of looks like he has a bit of a dad bod going on. He's just got swords wrapped around him. I mean, that would be pretty intimidating. I would not want to fight that dude. He's coming at you and you see that he's literally covered in fucking swords. I'd be like, um, maybe we don't fight that guy. Okay. So we've looked at our stuff. Let's go ahead and... Do a little spell creation. No, we don't... Oh yeah, we're gonna give him some spells. He only has 18 lore. That's fucking sad. That only costs 15. That costs 15. That costs 15. Does he want a charged fist? That's a push. I don't think he really wants a push. The ice one's probably good for him. What do I want to give him for his other one? Fire, lightning, atrophy. Vigor. Titan's touch. No. Touch of atrophy. Yeah. Give him that. This is our death from above. That's our second... Oh, and now I have Iron Tolling, which is my companion combo with, uh, with Barrick. Barrick and the Fate Binder both bang on their shields and armor, harassing an enemy. The target is compelled to attack Barrick for a short time, while the Fate Binder's mocking gestures leave the enemy confused and off guard. The foe loses all ability to parry and dodge until they recover their senses. Minus 1,000 parry and dodge. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And now we got this other new one, too. Launch Verse into the air, allowing her to unleash a series of well-aimed arrows into the target from above. Each of these arrows strikes true and has armor penetration. Pretty cool. Alright. What are we doing now? Oh, let's, let's change up our, our, our formation here a little bit. Like, I think what I want to do here is something like this. Maybe. My armor isn't getting any cleaner standing here.
she kind of needs to be in front for the for the um, healing, though. You didn't see nothing. Is officially metal as fuck. How is Seraphina seeing all this? She's got good eyes. Mongols could catapult him into an enemy town. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't have an actual aura that debuffs everyone. Actually, he does. It's one of his one of his first talents. It's right here. Enemies nearby Barrack have their resolve reduced because he's, quote, an intimidating force. Yeah, or because he smells like shit. Alright, what was I just doing? Oh yeah, I was gonna fuck around with my formation, but I think I'm okay with it, with it the way it is now. You got it. Alright. My Satanus. Um, do I want any of this stuff? 25 parry. Slightly better than one, but it's really expensive though, so no, I don't want any of that right now. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was gonna... Hmm. She needs to do a wheel to be able to use... Skewer. Well... I guess we don't need to use Skewer that badly. You got it. All right. Anything else for me to do? Oh, train. I need to train Barrack. What are we training him in? Dodge athletics. What's his athletics looking like? It's 31. Hers is much better. So we're not going to bother to train him in athletics. Perry would be good. Parry or dodge. I think we'll go all in with parry on him. Who did I just- No! No, I trained the wrong character! That's me! I don't want to train parry! Everyone smells like shit in Bronze Age. You don't see any porta potties, do you? No, but there's a difference between smelling like shit a little bit and and constantly shitting on yourself and having shit just on you, like lots of it. Okay, hold on. Do I need to redo anything that I just did, or is it basically? Yes, I need to switch that to there. I need to switch that to there. I need to... Will do. I need to give him spells. I have to redo all this shit. Yeah, the character progression and skill system seems a bit more complex than PoE. Yeah, maybe so. Scum save, it's a lot more simple in this game. Yeah, I'm all about some scum saving. 
Oh, you're talking you're talking to Scum Save, the person in the chat. Alright, she's not training Perry. He's training Perry. Okay, good. I think we're done here at the disfavored camp, finally. Only 11 hours into this. <laughs> we're already done with the disfavored camp for now. I don't think there's anything else do here we got the side quest we did the shopping oh I lied there is one more thing to do there is one more thing to do and that's by this scroll oh he can't equip a different Let's learn the scroll. Sigil of guarded form. Oh, did I just level up? Verse just leveled up. Cool. Verse is going to go all in on this to get more deflection and accuracy. And she's going to come over here and she's going to take nimble one. Let's make sure this works. F5. Currently, she's got a dodge of 59. If I take this, she should have a dodge of 69 now. And she does. And then if I go in here and I set her stance to three whispers, they won't even get close. Dodge of 89. So see, once she can use that to replace parry and dodge, She's going to be hard to hit. Plus, with all that deflection, when you do hit her, she's going to have almost a 50% chance of reducing it to a graze. Or when you graze her, I mean, she's going to be pretty tanky for not being tanky. And she can train again, yeah. You don't need to train training increase their XP bar, though. I don't know what that means, Photon. Now to spend an hour talking to Barrack and Verse. Training people and skills just lets you level faster. What do you mean just lets you level? Just implies that that's not a good thing. Level faster. Level faster is great. Especially since there's finite XP available in the game. So if you want to get to as high a level as you possibly can by the end, you really want to train every character every single level. Because that's, that's free XP. Well, it's not free. It costs some money, but not much. That's XP that you'd just be leaving on the table otherwise. I mean, her health isn't that much lower than Barracks. He's got 132, she's got 120. So it's not like she's got vastly lower health than him. Plus for accuracy. Look at all these effects she has. Dodge 89, parry 45. Oh, just point me in the right direction. Alright, now though. I just got a new expression, so now I gotta check all my spells to see what new ones I can make. Guarded form. Oh, champion's fortune. Okay, I cast on an allied target within 4 meters, plus 20% armor when under 35% health for 45 seconds. Ward the target with a protect. It's Quinn. Ward the target for with a protective enchantment, amplifying the target's armor when their health is most critical. Uh, that's okay. It's not great. 
atrophy. I can't use it with that expression. Fire. Ooh. Glowing barrier. 30% of fire damage converted to health for 45 seconds. Plus four fire armor. Use your knowledge of the flame to gain a healing effect when you would otherwise be harmed by fire. A portion of incoming fire damage heals you and your fire armor is increased. That is super situational. I would potentially make that spell and use it if we're going to be fighting things that are using a lot of fire damage against us. But it's super situational. Sigil of Lightning. Browning Core. Breathe the target in electrical energy. Enemies that strike the ally are zapped for shock damage. That's cool. That is really cool, actually. Put that on the tank and... Okay, hold on. And the last one? Permafrost. Coat the target in a thick layer of icy armor. While protected, slash, pierce, and frost armor are greatly increased, but shock and crush armor are reduced. And that's kind of situational. I mean, it depends on how much, what kind of damage you have coming in. Potentially good, I guess. Hmm. These all require lore 60 though, so he won't be able to cast these on himself, neither will she. So I'd have to be the one that cast these on them. Champion's Fortune. Hmm. I don't really like any of these all that much, except for maybe the, maybe the lightning one. That one's pretty cool. Could cast that on the tank. Can you save spells without putting in them on your hotbar? No, it doesn't seem like you can. You ha If you don't assign it, then whatever you did gets, you know, not used. Or gets not saved. Purposefully have your allies shoot fire shit while you go stand in fire. Unfortunately, there's no friendly fire, no pun intended, in this game. So it doesn't work that way. Your 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 spells, your, your fire spells or other spells do not affect your allies at all. I don't need to talk to Barrack and Versa and make a Quinn spell. So if I wanted to use this, I would have to get rid of one of these guess I'll get rid of the fireball wait can I prove this 75 lore 85 lore 70 lore, 80 lore. Yeah, I can't improve it yet. I don't have enough um, lore. I don't think I'll use the others for now. Okay. What did I need to talk to them about? At your service, Fate She doesn't what have do anything need? new to say. What did you have in mind? Oh, she does. What do you think about travel companions? Anyone in particular? What do you think of Beric? He's... well, I'll give him some due credit. He's more complicated than he looks. He's still an intolerant and unapologetic bastard, but that's more his business than mine. And I'm not going to talk to Beric yet until we, until we move on. Does this not make the game a bit easy then? Make AoEs... Well, they balanced around that, and in addition, it affects the enemies as well. And if you've ever played any RPG with friendly fire, you know that enemies are constantly nuking the shit out of each other. A lot of times, enemy AoEs help you more than them. 
And in this case, they won't be able to do that. And the game's balanced around it, so the AoE damage is based around the idea that you're going to hit as many targets as possible. So I think in that case, it doesn't necessarily make it easier. It just makes it different. He doesn't want to be part of the cool kid club where everyone is racing on skateboards and drinking purple Soros tracks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to be part of the cool kids club. Fuck those cool kids. Fuck those cool kids. Fuck those cool kids. No! Why did I drink that? I meant to drag that to here. Why would I do that? What's the cooldown on those? It's pretty quick. All right, let's let's go. Sterling Hagnon. Can I sell you this sword? Cool. Let's go. I got it. Slow claps. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I think we're ready to finally. Oh, we're not going to go do missions yet. We're going to the Scarlet Chorus camp. The Scarlet Chorus have taken residence within the decayed walls of an old fortress. It is currently the base of operations for the Voices of Narat's campaign in the valley. Like Rad Chad? I don't know who Rad Chad is. Must gather your party before venturing forth. All right, to the Scarlet Chorus camp. Two hours. I like how, I like how this thing moves when you're traveling on the world map. Ambush! Your path is blocked by a small group of Vendrian guard. You can go no further until you deal with them. A -a 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 Ambush! You have been waylaid by enemies and must defend yourself. This is a scripted one, though. It's not random. This always happens. That's far enough, Fatebinder. Oh shit! It's the narrator. It's Eb, who looks like an '80s pop star. A woman's voice booms from atop a nearby outcropping. Flashes of aquamarine body paint peek out from under her loose-fitting traveler's garb, and her outfit is festooned in braids and knots of sailor's line. Tell me more about this aquamarine body paint. The body paint, braided adornments, and stylized staff mark this woman as a tidecaster in before she slams her staff into the ground. One of the southern mage schools you encountered in 429 TR during the first campaign in Vendrian's Well. The School of Tides was once a powerful sect of mages with mastery over water and command of the moon's arcane light. The majority of the elders of the school fled in 426, fearing Kairos' coming conquest, and of the few that remained, nearly all were slain or imprisoned by the voices of Narat. Apparently she was one of the few survivors. Flanked on either side by warriors dressed in Vendrian guard regalia, the woman leans on an elaborate bladed staff pulsing with arcane energy. A swath of blue fabric rests draped over her arm. The blue flag is a symbol of diplomacy and truce recognized across most of the known world. Why, why couldn't it have just been a white flag? Because it's got to be blue. This is tyranny, motherfucker. It's a custom the tiersmen hold dear. To harm another person under the auspices of a blue flag is a grave offense. In both the tiers and in Kairos Empire, the customary punishment is death. Damn, that's pretty bad. Punishment of death just for violating the blue flag accord. Well, we're not going to violate it. Did the voices of Nurat send you to gather my head and complete his collection? If so, we'll have to save our tussle for another time. Today I have business. Vengeance can wait. Our tussle. Very major fear. That's a reaction to what I did with the, with the Tidecasters. Oh my god! She went straight up to fear two from nothing. Apparently she did not like me giving the mages to the tide to the vo to the voices of Nerat. You recognize this woman as Tidecaster Ebb, whom you met along with the other Tidecaster in the year 429 TR during the first campaign in Vendrian's Well. 
Meeting under a blue flag, you spoke primarily with the elders of the School of Tides to negotiate their surrender to Kairos. Several of the masters were moved by your words and surrendered, but many left the meeting unwilling to bend. Eb was among them. Man, straight to fear too, that's rough. Because she is one of the characters that I was planning to probably use for the whole game. Because she's the, she's the rebel one. You may have consigned my school to a fate worse than death, but you've done well by the Vendrian Guard. Many of them are alive today thanks to the truce you forged years back. They seem to think you have a trace of nobility in you. Here's hoping they're right. My character must be really fucking famous and distinctive because every single person knows exactly who my character is as soon as they see her. Okay, but I gained one loyalty already because of the truce. When the defenders of the Apex campaign sued Kairos forces for peace in 429, you negotiated the yielding of the realm, putting an end to the bloodshed, at least until fighting restarted in the early days 431. Many in Apex know you as the Peace Binder, and many see you as the voice of mercy that kept the two generals from slaughtering every last tearsman in the valley. That's me, I'm the Peace Binder. Why would you think that having a loyal minion is any better than having a fearful one? Because loyalty is definitely better than fear. Because if someone fears you, they're just waiting for the opportunity to fuck you over when they think they can do it without consequences. If they're loyal to you, they actually don't want to fuck you over. But as fear, if they just fear you, as soon as they fear anything else more than they fear you, they're going to fuck you over. With loyalty, again, they'll still be loyal. I mean, it just, it's just uh, you know kind of a no-brainer. You can rule people by fear, but if you do so, you better be prepared for them to rise up and bite you in the back the second they have any reason to fear you less. Role playing a person who is not a monster. I'm being an anti Josiah. Yes, I'm playing the anti Josiah. In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I offer and request a delay of blade. There are matters we must discuss without fear of reprisal. The woman bows deeply, lowering her head in a practice display of etiquette. The warriors by her remain in a ready stance, their nerves clearly on edge. That was Machiavelli Corner with Josiah and Anonymous. Well, maybe it's good for people to both be loyal to you and fear you. That is probably ideal. They need to fear you maybe at least a little bit, but mostly be loyal to you. That's how I think it, it's best. Uh, Alright, I'll go ahead and play along with this, as I am a diplomat. In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I abide by this truce. As is our custom, we are ready to kill to defend our lands, but we kill only in fair battle. We don't slay our prisoners. We know this isn't Kairos's way, but we must have hope. This is Grieving Mother, by the way. That's Grieving Mother. I liked Grieving Mother. She was one of my favorite characters in Pillars. Alright, we don't kill our prisoners. Got it. Isn't that very noble of you? A few of my kin have gone missing, and though they may have perished, I have to inquire on the off chance they still live. If Captain Tarkas Deimos still lives, we would negotiate for his release. He's the one that we gave to the chorus. One of the leaders of the attack on Edring Ruins, Tarkas Damos, was subdued during the battle. In accordance with the Scarlet Chorus's request, you ordered Damos conscripted into the chorus. So now I could lie to her and say that he's dead and gain some loyalty. I could lie and say we let him go, which she probably won't believe. I could tell her the truth which is that he's with the chorus and she doesn't like that she'll be more afraid of me I can pretend not to know who he is I can ask what she'd offer in exchange I can fail to negotiate which Barrack will like or I can just attack which Tunon will be pissed and that's interesting to me why would Tunon be so mad of me attacking these Vendrian gu guard people See, I think Tunon actually wants me to be diplomatic. Because just straight up attacking these people rather than being diplomatic will gain very major wrath with Tunon. So he would not approve of that. 
Maybe it will only piss him off because I already agreed to abide by the blue flag. And so if I went back on that, I'd be I'd be breaking a, a sacred kind of covenant or whatever, and Tunan wouldn't like that. It would essentially be unlawful. Um, she is now midriff mother. Yeah. She gives a fuck about having armor on her midriff. Well, she is a spellcaster, so, you know, blah, blah, blah. She uses magic to protect herself or whatever. I'm going to lie to her. Because my character is a manipulator, as I said. And she's willing to deceive people in order to sway them to how she wants them to believe and feel. So I think she's reading this character and realizing that the right thing to say is to just simply say that he's dead. So she's I'm going to lie to her. Tacos Demos is dead. And I could justify it to myself in some sense. Kind of like when Obi-Wan Kenobi said that Darth Vader was dead. Or that Anakin Skywalker was dead. In a sense he's dead. And in fact he is, right? Because when you join the Scarlet Chorus you lose your name. And they give you a new name. So Tarkos Demos, Tarkos Demos, quote unquote, that name is dead. Now there's a new person in the Scarlet Chorus with a new name, but that's not Tarkus Demos anymore. So see, I could like I could justify it in my mind that way and make myself believe it. And that is the best way to lie, by the way. Uh, quick lying lesson for my children's show. If you want to deceive somebody really well, the, the way to do it is make yourself believe what you're saying. Through whatever convoluted logic you need to. Then you can say it with absolute sincerity... And people won't think that you're lying because you actually believe what you're saying. You just have to make yourself believe it first. And if you can think about things from some sense, it's pretty easy to make yourself believe in just about anything you want to say. That's for the children's show. <laughs> uh, worked out really well for Luke, yeah. Oh, Tunon probably does have machinations at play beyond what serves Kairos. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't even be surprised if Tunon is Kairos. Or, you know, if Kairos is dead or whatever, and Tunon has just been pretending that Kairos is still around. That's how you make America great again. <laughs> Alright, Takos Demos is dead. I see. That is as I feared, but thank you for telling me all the same. I prefer closure to wishful thinking. Nice. Loyalty is up to one. If I may make one more inquiry, what of Pelox Tyrell? Did he survive? He's the guy that was holding the guy captive, and he definitely died. Though you rarely have the luxury of matching names to the countless tearsmen you've encountered, you are reasonably certain she is asking about the Vendrian Guard warrior that took Drastus hostage at Edgering Ruins. He did not survive the encounter. So... I might as well just be honest here. Pelox Tyrell is dead. She nods slowly, saying nothing for a long moment. My apologies, Fatebinder. I had a terrible feeling this errand was in vain from the start. Yeah, I feel like Obi-Wan shouldn't have really told him that. He probably... He was probably just trying to gain loyalty with Luke at the time. He was like, if I tell Luke the truth, it'll make Luke afraid. But if I tell him his father's just dead, then he'll like me more. I had a terrible feeling this errand was in vain from the start. Okay. I had no expectations that our friends could be saved, as I'm sure the time for swapping prisoners is long gone. But at least I know of what became of them. That'll have to be enough. We're done here. Yeah, if you attack, Tunon's mad. Um, oh, I can be cool with her. Which will gain me loyalty and favor with Vendrian Guard and her, which I definitely want to do. Sorry you did not find with you what you were seeking, and I bow deeply. Then all that remains is for me to thank you for hearing me out. In accordance with our ancient customs north and south, let us part with peaceful accord. She bows curtly, never letting her eyes leave yours, before turning to leave. A moment later, the bodyguards turn to follow. In a conversation. Hold on, though. There was supposed to be more to that conversation. Like, significantly more. 
Just a second. It's just maybe we need to do that slightly different. Just a smidget. Creepy dude in a van, Obi Wan. I guess so. That's far enough, Fate Finder. Hey there, little boy. Do you want to see my lightsaber? Oh God! Did the voices of Nerf? You may have cons in accordance with ancient customs, north and south. As north is our and custom, south, few yeah. Of my kin have gone missing. He's I dead. See. If I may make one more. Inquiry. He's dead. My apologies. I had no expectations that our friends could be. Oh, saved. I have to say, I have some questions for you. Prisoners is long gone. That's what but I need to I say. At least I know what became of them. That'll have to be enough. I have some questions for you. We shouldn't be socializing with Oathbreakers. Shut the fuck up, shit-smelling Kana. I will entertain them as best I can. After all, understanding is the only hope we have. What is it you wish to know? Stealing Family Guy's jokes now, Saito? Wow. Alright, what is it I wish to know? Why did you resist Kairos? What are you trying to save? I grew up without my knee bent to Kairos. And if I'm going to bow to someone, let it be another tearsmith. We've ruled ourselves just fine for centuries, so we'll give our lives so that our sons and daughters might rule themselves. It seems... I don't know. Maybe okay, maybe not. This really depends. The Younger Realms... We read about the Younger Realms already. We'll be set... But a mage like you would not be the subject of such superstition and fear under Kairos' range. reign. I doubt life is any better sworn to some mad Archon. I'd rather stand with my fellow Tearsmen. Well, I suppose, stand immediately behind them in the event of an attack. At that remark, the soldiers flanking her exchange shocked looks. Ebb turns her focus to her compatriots. Yeah, you heard me. The way things were years back, you'd all be calling me a water witch and conspiring to sell me out to the nearest sage. Just because I'm helping you stop Kairos doesn't mean I've forgotten the hospitality of ages past. Wow, so... Apparently it sucks to be a mage down here in this part of the world. She seemed a bit too trusting in all your statements for someone she may have had to fight a moment earlier. Yeah, I guess she figures I had no reason to lie to her. I remember one of the Star Wars specials of Family Guy. It was really funny. At least parts of it were really funny. Like when the Emperor was like, Blah, 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 dark side. Blah, 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 complete. I can't do it, but he made him. He, he sounded just like the Emperor, and it was pretty fucking funny, because that's basically what the Emperor sounds like when he's talking. He ends like every sentence with Dark Side or Complete. <laughs> Barbarians need Kairos to enlighten them, yeah. Alright, she hasn't forgotten the hospitality and people of wonder why past. the Tearsmen could never unite in time to fight back. It's refreshing to see that some things never change. All right, verse. That's cool. The younger realms are beset with constant battle. You'd prefer that to Kairos's order. You make conflict sound like a bad thing. Yes, the younger realms saw frequent battles, but it was never this wholesale slaughter like we've seen of late. No tearsman ever cast an edict on the soil, or forced prisoners to kill each other, or butchered beastmen tribes. Okay, she's got some points there. So even though they had conflict here before, it still wasn't as bad as the evil shit that the Empire does. Only your daughters are truly free in the tears. Why fight against Kairos' equality? There's freedom, then there's trusting idiots with power. Give a man a million marauders, he'll lose sleep worrying over his neighbor's thousand. It's true. I prefer my realms ruled by the braver sex. For centuries, we've left the lands to the women, and the seas to the men. And we did plenty fine until Kairos came around. Alright. I mean, it seems like it would be better to just let men and women own land, and let men and women own ships, but, you know, whatever. 
Whatever works for you people. What makes you think you have a chance? Oh, we don't. Those who believed Kairos could be stopped all died years ago, in the first wave of fighting. It's not about the hope of victory. It's about the hope of inspiring others. It is very likely we will fall here in Bendrian's well. But perhaps others will arise elsewhere. So basically they're trying to be the 300 here. They know they're going to lose no matter what, but they're hoping to inspire everyone else to rise up and fight against the Empire because of what they did. Let me ask of something else. She nods, silently awaiting your follow-up. How did you and your friends overthrow the garrison, besides throwing a spear through somebody's helmet? I would joke that the voices of Narat left the gate unlatched, but dozens of warriors lost their lives taking the citadel. There is no secret to it. We simply attacked with speed and certainty at a time when the Archons were elsewhere in the tiers. The Scarlet Chorus had a rout, and what few disfavored soldiers were present made an impressive showing. But they were surrounded and overwhelmed once the chorus fled. Right, and that's for, and that's for another reason why they're mad at the chorus because they got ganked because the chorus didn't help them enough. Who's in charge of this insurrection? Listen to you, thinking just like the Overlord wants you to think. There always has to be a person in charge, or things don't make sense. <laughs> we don't answer to anyone. We are each of us sons and daughters of the Tears, and take this task upon ourselves freely. The Captain Tarkas Ari, former Falksman of Queen Bendry and Alanta, is the voice we trust when we seek unanimity. Unanimity, good word. Tarkas Ari. So Tarkas... They seem to have a thing in the tiers where their last name is actually said first, then their surname. So this Tarkus Ari is related to Tark- oh yeah, it says that right here. These are some small ass confrontations. Yeah, why would she tell me that? I know, right Saito? Um... I suspect it's already common knowledge. I think the armies probably already know who Tarkasari is and that she's in charge. Um, yeah, the, th the, the way all these the talk about all these confrontations makes it sound like it's not a lot of people. That's why I thought it was only maybe 200 disfavored instead of 10,000. I mean, that's not the entire ranks of all disfavored in the world. That's just the ones that are right here in this valley. So it's got to be just 200, not, not 10,000. I assume Tarkas Ari and Tarkas Deimos are relations. Yes. Deimos is... was... Ari's brother. We were certain he was dead, but... The captain takes family seriously. So I volunteered to find some answers. And now here we are. That's going to be really awkward later when they have to fight against him, who, who is now in the Scarlet Chorus, and they're going to be like, we thought you were dead. Hey, there's nothing wrong with the stomach, Tat. Were there prisoner swaps in the past? That is our way, Binder. Here in the South, only thugs and bandits kill prisoners. The Younger Realms may be guilty of constant fighting, but we never slay each other when the battle's long over. We're not about to change that now. Okay. <clears throat> well, that does sound a little bit better. Hey, where can I advise Kairos to send some gift baskets if I wanted to say sorry to your soldiers? <laughs> As a rule, Kairos's forces haven't been keen on swapping prisoners. But I know our disfavored prisoners aren't prisoners anymore. I just assumed they were swapped for some of our own. Ah, uh, well that's all. That's all the questions I have. <laughs> Fair enough. But now a question for you. A question for me? But you already asked me questions. The Edict. I can feel its magic coursing through the air. Everyone can. But those of us enlightened to the currents of magic feel it most. The wording of the Edict. What was it? 
See, again, remember in the very beginning when I was like, I think they've been warned about the edict ahead of time. That's why they were all trying to flee the valley, just as I was coming in to do the edict. I think somebody told them that an edict was coming here. Because, yeah, she feels some magic coursing through the air, but how does she specifically know that it's an edict, unless they already knew ahead of time that there was going to be an edict? Glare silently. Yeah, they said that actually they have glare silently as an option in many, many dialogues throughout the game. So I want to do an all glare silently run for one of my playthroughs. Uh, I can lie. I can be honest and Beric doesn't like it. I can not tell her. Well, fuck Beric. Kairos forces must take Ascension Hall by the Day of Swords, or all in the valley will perish. In the name of the vaunted North, the will of Kairos should be delivered with blade and hammer, not to the ears of oathbreakers and compromisers. Shit smelling Kana, shut up. Curious. You did say all in the valley. So the edict will affect Kairos's forces? This is most unexpected. Her eyes widen at your words. No, just the Oathbreakers. Glare silently. <laughs> Correct. That is most troubling. So either the soldiers come to destroy and kill us, or the edict does the work. I suppose we should be so honored the Overlord is taking no chances on us. I have another question for you, if you will entertain it. Sure, why not, 80s pop star? Are we really standing here and chatting with Oathbreakers? It's hard to watch, like cuddling a goat you're going to kill for dinner. Calm your shit, Verse. Ask your question, Eb. When I was young, my parents told me the tears were special, and the Overlord's edicts and armies could never touch us. It seems I've been told a hefty sum of lies. So answer this honestly for me, please. Is it true that Tunon's fate binders can smell truth from falsehood? Glare silently. Uh, yep, we sure can. No, that's not true. Thanks for that. I could see why you'd want to foster the mystique all the same. The School of Tides would always tell commoners we didn't know how to summon drinkable water. Once they find out, you can't eat in peace. And Kairos's edicts. I have heard the sages speak at length that some of the edicts elsewhere in the world have been broken. How is this? I have a feeling that Voices of Narat and Graven Ash would be pissed if they knew I was telling her all this stuff. I can lie about edict lasting forever. I can lie about a strong anti-magical force. I can use my lore. I can basically be honest about nobody really fucking knows let's use my lore it varies based on the wording of the proclamation if kairos provides a clause allowing the edict to end that clause can be satisfied ah so some edicts are forever the rest are as long as kairos has in mind needless to say Kairos' magic is unlike anything we've seen in any Archon. Well, yeah, Kairos is way more powerful than any Archon. And one more mildly self-indulgent question, but I simply must know. Kairos, male or female? She only asked me that because the Vendrian Guard like me. See? You don't know the answer. All, if you say for sure that Kairos is a man or a woman, you're automatically lying, because you actually don't know. I honestly do not know for certain. Really? You don't know either. You work for the Overlord, but you don't know if she, or he, has an innie or an outie? An innie or an outie? Seriously? That's what we're calling penis and vagina now? An innie or an outie? Well, I know whether you have an innie or an outie, because I can see your belly button. Your harem is stocked with both. 
Just wants to keep people guessing. Would you feel better or worse to know you lost to a man or a woman? Why does this matter? Would you feel better or worse to know you lost to a man or a woman? Why does this matter? You speak true. It ultimately matters not. My apologies. The question now seems rather foolish. You must remember, Kairos was just a horror story from distant lands for much of our lives. We have many unanswered questions. You'll forgive, I hope, the questions. The Overlord and his Archons used to be things of legend. Now they're everyday maladies, and I'm eager to separate the truth from the lies I've been told by House and Guild. See, I've already got three, three ranks of loyalty with her already. That's pretty good. In accordance to our most ancient customs, let us depart in honorable accord. May peace find you, Fatebinder. She bows deeply, pounding her staff. Po I told you! I fucking told you! She was going to pound her staff on the ground. Every character we have talked to so far that had a staff in their hand has pounded on the fucking ground. This is, this is like Durance all over again, except for it's everybody. Everybody that has a staff, or a, or a hafted weapon like a maul or anything, they all pound that shit on the ground. All of them. Well, the dialogue with uh, Verse was certainly not formal. She, she said fuck and all kinds of stuff like that. Staff pounding is how things are done around here. It's basically this world's version of a fist bump. Staff bump. She bows deeply, pounding her staff on the ground twice before turning to leave. Just one staff pound isn't enough. So... You can kill them if you want. You can't kill Ab here. If you fight them, Ab disappears. She runs off. She uses magic or something and gets away. But you could kill her guards. Of course, I didn't choose to do that. All right, let's look for Will loot. Do. Looking for I'll loot. Be your shadow. Looking for loot. Ooh, a sky cap. Ooh, a marshberry. Ooh, a awaking death. Okay. We're going to give one of these to him. I'm going to put this on her. I'm going to put this on me. Twice means much respect. On the lookout. Let's search Can't do that. Can't do that. I believe my subterfuge is high enough to find Sorry, any hidden I stuff can't. without being in stealth. They won't see me coming. But I don't actually know that for sure. Quiet down. I'll be your shadow. Moving cautiously. The grasslands of the tears stretch far throughout the land. Much of it remains uninhabited and unclaimed by any faction. Little grassland area. You didn't see nothing. Oh, see, I found something found without something. being in stealth. I like how you get subterfuge XP just for finding shit. That's pretty cool. Got some heavy cloth sandals. Let's take a look. I could wear those and get a little bit of a benefit. She could wear those and lose. He can't wear them at all. I'll wear them. Yeah, sandals. Let's do this. Oh, you can see- Yes! You can see my leg snake now! My snake- I've got a snake tattoo on my leg. And you can actually see it now because I am wearing sandals. That's fucking awesome. I mean, you can't see it very well. But you can still see it. Thanks for spilling all the beans, sucker. Well, she spilled a lot of beans as well. I mean, there was a lot of mutual bean spilling. Can I kill those? I'll be your shadow. Another, oh, another. Oh, we're getting marsh marshberries for days now. Blood moss. Uh, I don't really care about blood moss. Can I kill those? Can't 
can't do that. I don't think we can. Sorry, I can't. I don't think we can. No, we can't attack the deer. Unlike in Pillars of Eternity. You can make out the faintest outline of a soldier's arm in the bottom of this pond. A victim of a previous battle in this area. Time to lighten my step. Oh god. Listening to Kana Barrick talking about being stealthy. What's the lore of heavy cloth sandals? I don't think there is any. Yeah, there's no lore. Unfortunately. Deer is almost like Deaver, but without the V. Alright, I think we're done here. Time to move on to the Scarlet Chorus camp. Thirty-two minutes. You probably don't want to eat deer who've been drinking corpse water. That's true, but maybe I could take their hides or something. Why is my formation all stupid? Yeah, that's better. Okay. In our next episode, we will go and we will explore the Scarlet Chorus camp and talk to people and buy and sell stuff and get quests and everything and loot stuff. But that's going to do it for this one. So if you're watching my stream, don't worry, I am not stopping. I am going to keep on playing for 12 more hours because I am now halfway done with my 24-hour stream. But... If you're watching on YouTube, that's going to do it for this episode. So thanks for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Tyranny.